Good morning everyone, it's Tommy Alden here and today we face Chesterfield at home yes Chesterfield League Leaguers who could be champions of the National League by the end of today but that will not happen until at the earliest quarter to five they need to win and if Barnet lose I would say I thought rather than wear a club shirt I'd wear my blue and tangerine coloured pretty green shirt today so I'm doing a little pre-match vlog at home today for the simple reason I've not got an awful lot of time with it being an early kickoff. So if Chesterfield win today and Barnet lose, they can be champions. But as it's an early kickoff, they will not win the title at Boundary Park. It will be at the earliest quarter to five. Now for me, I'm hearing people say today it's about being the party poppers, spoiling, ruining Chesterfield's champions. Let's not kill ourselves. They're going to be champions anyway. It's just a matter of when. But for me now, the more important matter is that Oldham Athletic sort their shit out. We are currently outside of the playoff spots. Yes, Tuesday night's game against Halifax was postponed. But again, let's not kid ourselves. We have not been at our best the last couple of weeks. We've had some shocking results. And one of the main reasons has been our home form. Now, in Trollham's style, we do normally raise our game against sides at the top. We didn't do that against Bromley. So today could be a typical attics where we'll throw the world's best performance in. Or it could be maybe another shocking game where we get hammered. Or even like Wrexham or Shea where we'll dominate it and throw it away at the end. Either way, we need to get our heads focused now. The priority is getting back into playoff spots. And as I said the other week, it's like we're took for being in the playoffs for granted like the job's done and it's far from it. The loss away out of the shot makes me wonder now and the players think, you know what, we're not immune to losing the game away from home. Obviously, Chesterfield's main man, Mr. Ollie Banks, is probably going to have a field day. And as usual, there'll be plenty of banter. And we will give him plenty of stick, as we always do so. But it's about time the Oldham players now stepped up the performances and made the game. Hogan put a tweet out rallying the troops, which is good to hear. But we need action. Action on the pitch speaks a lot louder than words. And we have got a couple of tough games. Oh, we've got Stell at home still to come and the rearranged game with Halifax. Well, Stone's last home game of the season. That won't be a walkover if they're still in a relegation battle. Or no, the manager's gone and the performances have dipped. Dagging them away next week. Although we've never lost there, it's, they're still a funny team in this league. And with our form being so inconsistent, you don't want to really take anything for granted and then filed on bank holiday on, so on Good Friday who at the moment seems to be on a bit of form so we need to start putting a run together I don't want to take any gambles I'd rather get in them playoffs and get a playoff place secured so it's time for the boys now to become men this is the business part of the season and the fans are there the fans are going to keep on going but if we really want to get out of this league it's not a case of if we're good enough or not if we can get out of it we're out of it. So, come on, Oldham. See on the terraces. Let's get ourselves a much-needed big home win today. So, here's a little bit about Chesterfield. Obviously, from Derbyshire. Performed in 1866. Originally, 104 years ago, 1919, when they reformed. They were Chesterfield Town for a bit. They're currently playing at the SMH Group Stadium. It holds just over 10,000 fans. For many years, though, they played at the Saltsgate. With the founder members of the 3rd Division North in 1921 22, and runners include obviously 3rd Division North champions, which was over 3, 1930 to 31 to 1935 to 36, 4th Division, 3rd Division Level 2, League 2, Level 4 champions, 1969 to 70, 1984 to 85, 2010 and 11, 2013 14, as well as being promoted 2000. All one playoff winners in 1995, Midland League champions 1909 to 10, 1919 20, Football League trophy winners 2011 and 12. Let's not remind us of that year. Winners up in 2013 14, Anglo Scottish Cup winners in 1982 81. They've won Derbyshire Senior Cup seven times. From what I've read, though, they don't play that much now. They reached the FA Cup final in 1997. Just a few of the FA Cup semi final in 1997 when they lost to Middlesbrough at Old Trafford. They were relegated out of the EFL in 2017 18. An interesting fact since 
An interesting fact, in 2002, they beat Oldham 4-2 at Salt Gate. And Oldham took the lead. But what was funny was making his debut for Oldham, having just signed from Chesterfield, was David Reeves. But making a debut to Chesterfield were players two signed from Oldham, which was Mark Heller and Mark Innes. Their main rivals are Mansfield and to lesser extent not to count. They don't like either Sheffield clubs or Rotherham and they also aren't keen on Grimsby, Doncaster and Derby. I can't really remember them playing Derby in my lifetime much. Or they probably have, but it's something to look upon. A couple of the current key players include Will Grigg, ex Athletics players, Ollie Banks and Mike Jones, Ryan Colclough and Tom Naylor. And it is one of my favourite rounds, just it's a good day out. Obviously, they had a FA, good FA Cup run this year, they're not Pompey out. And it's similar to when Rex and Stockport were in this division the years, they went up, they both had good cup runs. And not just at this level, but it pisses me off when people say, oh, you can't win the league and have a good cup run. What a load of rubbish. You can do both if you've got a good manager that's in sort of the right winning mentality. And what that means is that the squad is proper motivated. And even your fringe players will be sniffing the chance of getting involved because you know if a good cup run means they're successful as well, part of it. Lovely looking Bounty Park on a hot summer's day here. So the football matches. That's it. I've got stewards even before you turn off, they're really expecting a bit of miser today.
Saved one last week.
players, log it off, you know the same people, play ground space. And another day, got it to run back. So that was a good game to watch, one of the best performances I've seen at home for a while. It shows what a difference you can make when you play it on the ground and you're not hoofballing it. Quick passing made a difference, I thought. You see more players on the same level with the passing. Obviously Norwood and Dallas worked really well, they both linked up together and it did pay off. It's probably the best game I've seen Dallas play. So far, it's a good performance. We're straight into him from the start. We didn't give him any time, give him very little time on the ball. And the first 25 minutes, you'd have thought we were a team top of the league. And credit to Garner as well, I thought he put in an outstanding performance. Sharon played really well, especially in the first half. The fact we played plenty of passes forward rather than this passing battle. Okay, we did in the final few minutes, but it's something at home now to build on. It shows what you can do when you get on the front foot and rattle teams early and a lot of people probably come out of that game very enjoyable and the result probably didn't match the intensity it's one of them games where we've took a point but I think we could have won it I think they were there for the take but I also understand that the final few minutes they've got a habit of scoring late goals so I can see why probably part it that big cautious and the fact Chesterfield rested a few plays Dobra, Colclough we didn't give Ollie Banks his famous moments to give us the fees or anything, but a lot of our players did something they don't do a lot today. They work their asses off and they put in tackles, strong tackles. So against Aldershot last week, we didn't. We we're letting players run past us, run through us. We pressed them really well. And we didn't panic either. We felt more comfortable at times on the ball. McGay played really well at right back. He was solid. He had a decent game. Again, another position to look at in steppy ties and so we know What's happening with such Steph and Sutton, but not so much long term. Kitchen, again, finally saw the kitchen we've seen at the start of the season. He looked better being behind rather than overlapping. Cole, Conlon and Lundstrom both had probably their best games in a long time. Lundstrom especially, he looked a lot more positive. They had a better approach to the game. I thought the formation was set up to suit us better. Chesterfield played a high defensive line, but you can also see where they are. But, God, at times, unlike Oldham, their defending was appalling. To be fair, I thought Hogan at times was a bit hit and miss. He played well, but it wasn't his best game. But I still think we should have won that. On another note, the referee was an absolute grade A idiot. Him and the linesman. But it's not the worst referee we've seen this season. But the stats say it all. Ten attempts, five on target, five corners. To Chesterfield's five attempts, two on target and two corners. It's something now to build on for the next remaining games this season. We've got to do this against the lesser teams as well, not just the teams at the top if we're going to get in the playoffs. Now, results sort of went in our favour. York got a last minute goal as well against Aldershot. Gate said loss. And again, it's going to be who dares wins, as Del Boy says. Oldham play Gate said next week anyway, so if we get a win, we're guaranteed to be in the playoffs. It's just a case of maintaining it and keeping it in there. But to be fair, a good afternoon at Boundary Park. Decent crowd. All this about um, Norwood not coming for his Man of the Match award. To me, it looks more like one individual who, I've said before, thrives off social media for his own. Like, so I won't take too much into it. Maybe they could have said, right, well, again, maybe another occasion he will come in, sort things out. But we didn't lose. Good game to watch. And that, again, gives us hope for the season, especially in the playoffs. And as I said, at home, if we use advantage well, we can make Boundary Park a fortress to suit our needs. Yeah, it was a soft goal to concede. It didn't look a penalty, but one week you get them, one week you don't. So I'm saying, oh, how loud Chesterfield fans were. To be fair, 
I've been in a Chevy and the chain. It's not the loudest stand. And you could hear, see we were making all they weren't that loud. And we have had louder fans this year. Kidderminster were fairly loud. Ebsley were loud. Halifax were. But as I've always said, away followings, how loud your fans are, doesn't win your games. And it never has. But I, you look at where Chesterfield are now. Look how they've done in the league this year. And if we don't go up this year, that is what we should be aiming to be next season. To be on top of that league. And why they've won so many games, why they've put so many games to bed, why they've scored so many goals, and it's something for us to build on. Like Chesterfield looked at Wrexham and Notts County last season after they dipped off early bells and lost in the playoff final. Shout out to the Sparta F Prague fans. Uh, I actually saw a couple of them on Market Street and shout it all come to all them, whether they, that's why they came up or not. But they were good to talk to, good to have a laugh with. We hope you enjoyed the day. They were very loud. Here's a video of them in the fans' bar after the game. <laughs> Big shout out to Andy Swain and Paul Wright, two Oldham fans who have just completed the free peach challenge, raising money for little Tommy Squibbs. Tommy was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. And I will share the fundraising efforts in the video description. And other club um, have done all they can to and help him out fundraising. And Tommy's dad, Dan, is a football coach, and I'm my nephew who used to go to school. And I'm all for helping out any sort of good cause in which we can promote. For it, so well done, guys. Any donations will be welcome for the two of them. So, a few people have asked about some of my video changes. Most of it I do on an app called Film Eagle, but I've now got a brand new phone. It's a Sony Xperia 5, and I'm currently learning there's a video app on there which, in the long run, will be far better than Film Go. I'm still learning it in and out. I will be still using Film Go for a little bit, but my whole overall is to try and improve my quality. Don't get me wrong, I'm not obsessed with certain angles. I'll still go to the game. I'll just put my phone up and basically pay no attention to how I'm filming because I'm still watching and enjoying the game. But YouTube, I put on the Art of the Terrace video the other day. Hope you've had a chance to check it out. It said I had 55 views early on, which I was impressed with. YouTube have took it down to day to five, you bunch of wankers. I'm not sure why they've done that, but please check it out. I went to a brilliant ground hop the other night. Scalman still United are having a shockingly bad season. The bottom of the league. They were demoted last year. But you know what? Their fans were absolutely brilliant. Some of the banter. And they won 3-0 early. Since you now turns to Dagenham away. Unfortunately, I won't be at that game. And I won't be at the England game. Even though I've thought you've got things on it. I mean, I can't go. But please hold them. Take what we've done today. And take it to Dagenham. And build on it. Let's not have another throw it all the way disappointing hoofball performance. And anyway, I'm Tommy Oldham. Keep well, all of you. Check out my other videos. I'll see you on the terraces. Come on, Oldham.